of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks for coming tonight, everybody. Uh, first off, we are going. We have an appointment to the Triton Regional School Committee to fill a vacant seat left by the resignation uh, of Daniel Valiente. So, if we could start with Josephine Antico. Right here. So, are you going to ask else to take a yeah, seat? Yeah. Are, are, are there any um, any other candidates I would ask to take a seat out in the lobby, just so we can have kind of a fair process here with the order. Mm -hmm. We'll you, bring Mark. you in. Thank you. Come on up. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes. Bill's being in Tico, 74 Calvary Farm, in my city. And I'm a retired educator. I think I sent all my information over to him. I'm doing this already. But I do have it. That tells me a lot. That tells you really a lot about me. Yeah, um, we have right. I'm well, because I know you won't have that much time. I don't want you to know it. I'm retired from the Boston Public Schools after 39 years of service. I have a bachelor's in education and a master's in education. One is secondary, the other in elementary. And uh, I've taught at the high school level. I've also been an administrator in the Boston Public Schools since I retired. I have a whole new career. I've uh, worked. I taught a year at uh, North Shore of Oak. I taught for a long term south at Essex Aggie. I taught for six and a half years English language learners in Saugus. I taught one year as a Title I teacher in Saugus, an elementary level. And then I substituted in various communities all around the school system, all around the North Shore mostly, because I knew everybody from Boston and I wanted to get to know people from the North Shore. As you can see, education is my life. But, and I loved it, and I did it for so many years because I loved it. Um, why do I want to do this? First thing, um, my husband already volunteers for the town. I thought, I have time now. <laughs> it doesn't look like I have much time, but I do. And since I know so much about schools and the operation, and I know a lot about kids, and um, I think you can see on my resume that I've done three accreditations one for the Westport candidates uh, and also for East Boston High, where I was the chair of the committee. And I also started, I also was a coordinator of support services where I got grants and opened the clinic in the school and I had adolescent psychologists and on and on to help kids who had problems in the school. And then I managed a quarter of the school when I was a program director. It's much like your assistant principals, assistant principal and uh, program coordinator combined. So I know a lot about schools. So why do I want to do this? My, my primary focus really is school safety. Having been in so many schools, I can't tell you there's anything wrong with the school safety that's been established. What is wrong is the students do not take it seriously. And they think it's never going to happen to them. So I really bothered by that. And so I wanted to become a part of the school committee because I'm really interested in the kids' lives and that they're safe. And it's, it's we go to Occam's Razor, take the most simple solution. When they have that problem in park, I'll tell you what the problem is. Why don't they lock the doors? That's the main issue in all schools. Lock the doors. And then, and then another thing, is, as, as a sub, I think everybody requires training on school safety. And they don't get that much training. It's because you have lives of students in your hands, literally. Um, I think that's mainly why I wanted to do this, but yeah. this is my business, and I love it. Okay. Um, we have five questions we're going to ask of each candidate. Um, Selectman might pose an additional question, but what we're going to do is we're going to try to ask the same questions of all the candidates to ensure a process. Okay. Do you uh, want to ask school committee to come up here with us? Or yeah. Would you guys like to join us? Sure. You ladies know? Sorry. <coughs> Current school students. Dean Sullivan. Newberry. 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 They always say Newberry. No one knows the fact. That's Dean Sullivan and Maureen. All right. So there'll be a couple questions from them and a few questions from us. I'm going to start out uh, 
Question number one, what roles, if any, have you had in the Triton District? So really, I just saw that a little bit, not uh, anything else. I haven't had roles in the Triton District. How would you integrate leadership roles you may have had in the role of a school committee member? Well, since I know so much about operations of the school, I think I think that I could integrate my my understanding of operations, and I've also dealt with budgets and hiring, and well, obviously school safety and accreditation. So. All those things are very much involved with, with uh, the operations of the school and the school committee. You set policy. And policy safety is very much involved with policy. Okay. Uh, what is something about Triton that has made you proud and something that makes you critical? Very proud. I have a I have first I have a first grade granddaughter at uh, High Grove. That makes me very proud. I've got a lot of great people through the school system. Um, what I think is critical, I think what's critical is that, that people don't really understand funding of the school system. All they understand is how much you need for your pocketbook at that point. They don't really understand. Since I'm intimately involved in it, I understand more of the funding of schools. And I know how difficult it is to owe an mass people's money, you know, October 23rd. <laughs> right. Thank you for your interest in the school committee. Um, we're really pleased to see that we have so many qualified candidates. Um, what is your understanding about the relationship between a regional school district and the Board of Selectmen? I really don't understand that much about how the Board of Selectmen are involved, involved with the school committee. I really didn't understand that, I have to say honestly speaking. I know that you they make the selection. Um, do, uh, are they responsible for funding or policy? I, I really don't understand. Well, the that. town is responsible for funding. I guess the, the reason why Maureen and I um, feel this question is important is because we meet with, we call it the district communication uh, meeting, and mm -hmm. we meet with members of the boards of selectmen, FinCom, the, the town administrators, on a monthly, bi monthly uh, interval to, to discuss the budget. Because as you've indicated, you know that a budget is a difficult part of our job, right, yeah. and um, we need to get everybody on board, because they really are the, the advocates. We advocate for the schools, they have to advocate for the they schools and the rest of the, the schools. I can tell you that the town town Boston and Boston system is completely different. You have a school committee, right. and you know it's so big that we don't have a board of selectmen. They have city council, or you go again. So, yeah. it's so it's so completely different mm -hmm. to me, honestly speaking. Thank you. Um, Justine, can you just talk a little bit about what you know about the time commitment that is asked of school committee members? I, I, I know you have, I don't really care about the time commitment, I have a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> Say that now. So you know what, <laughs> yeah. you know, I'm looking at, this gets me involved in something that I love to do, and it gets me away from my husband because I'm going to drive <laughs> I am so happy he's working for the town. <laughs> when he goes out every day, he's gone. So now, now I'll be out, and he'll be out. It's great. <laughs> okay. uh, any additional questions any of uh, our board members want to ask? Yeah, I was just curious, in what other capacities have you served as a volunteer outside of uh, schools? Uh, mostly I volunteered in schools. I was the uh, student student support coordinator. I was I, I did the I did the yearbook. I did so many things in the schools. I didn't have time for other things. I had a couple of kids at home and my husband was in law school. So Fair it was enough. difficult. Very, very difficult. And I lived in Hamilton and worked in Boston. So I'm lucky that I got there very I don't have that much energy. <laughs> Um, just curious. The one question that I have is, uh, do you know, well, what would you think the greatest challenge right now facing the Triton Regional School, school District? It's fun. It's fun. It's always fun. I think, I think one of your biggest challenges right now is trying to get the state to pay, to pay what they promised they would pay. Mm -hmm. Especially on those uh, funding for regional buses. That's, that's, a, that's ridiculous. I went to a meeting with a couple of the, uh, Bruce Tower and, and Brad Hill, and they talked about 
they were going to uh, they were going to try to bring it up before the state so we would get the school funding. If you got the funding that you were promised and also the funding for SPED, you wouldn't have all these issues of getting money because you're not getting money, especially in the regional school district, that you deserve. You have to bust these kids all over the place. But nobody's paying you for that. And right. it's not fair. Right. Any other questions? Okay. Want me to tell you more jokes? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you. And uh, you want me to step up? No, you can join the audience. Okay. Now. Thank you. Thanks, Joseph. Thank, thank, thank you. Okay. Could we get Robert Ross? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Robert. Say though, I just I met somebody out there that I think has a lot more experience than I do. But, <laughs> and I think you know that's fine. But I would just I'll go through the process. But I think he sounds like a good candidate. So um, <laughs> uh, I'm fairly new to Newberry, uh, and um, I uh, have been involved in educational publishing for 35 years. So primarily, I publish mathematics, engineering, computer science college level textbooks but beyond like freshman sophomore year so you'd probably be a major in those topics to buy one of my books and then i also publish monographs research articles and journals so the whole gamut of academic publishing uh, my interest in education is that i strongly believe that uh, there's a deficiency at our high school level in teaching STEM topics, so that's science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So a recent report came out that said by the year 2020, there will be one million unfilled jobs in STEM areas. And, you know, realizing that there's a set curriculum, you have to teach the test, kids have to take SATs, things like that. There are courses that I think could be offered to help encourage students to become more technologically savvy and I think that's something that from what I can see most of the public schools around here are missing and it can start early at the elementary levels as well but the private schools have them and so that's sort of an advantage and I kind of get the sense that there's some competition for students between the private schools and the public schools and you know where they matriculate and who goes where so when I saw this opening, I thought it was a great opportunity to at least come and give this perspective, okay, that this is an area that I'm particularly interested in. It's a, and it's kind of precise, so it's not, you know, a district-wide thing, but it's just an area that I think, um, watching my own kids go through high school, it was really lacking for them. So I'm basically talking about, like, a coding course. Okay, kids can learn to code in kindergarten, believe it or not. And so as they go to high school, they take a coding course. One of the first questions you're asked is, can you code when you apply for a job as an engineer or a computer science or anything else? And, you know, some kids get into it, they start coding, and they become the hackers and everything. But they, <laughs> by the time they get to high school, they're ready. And these kids, if they take two years of courses at UMass, they get offered a $150,000 job. So um, there's a lot of interest in this, and it's something that kids I, I just have always looked at their computers and said, you have no idea what you have in your hands. I mean, that computer is more computing power than what sent men to the moon. And they word process on it, or they Facebook, or they Instagram. You know? So anyway, that's kind of my bet. So. <laughs> all right. We have some pre-prepared questions we're going to ask of all the candidates sure. to ensure a fair process. So um, there'll be a couple <coughs> questions from us and a couple from the school committee. So I'll kick it off for the Board of Selectmen. What roles, if any, have you had in the Triton District? Yeah, I haven't had any in the Triton District. Okay. 
how would you integrate leadership roles you may have had in the role of a school committee member? Well, okay, so um, one of the things that I've done for a while now is I'm on this ad Dean's Advisory Council to a university in Wisconsin, and it's the school that I am, um, I love this, uh, it's the University of Wisconsin Whitewater, uh, probably better known for D3 football dominance than anything else, but um, what we do there is we explore ways to advance the endowment of the university. So, the state schools in Wisconsin, and I assume in other states, are scared that they're going to lose their funding because they're cutting back budgets everywhere. So they, for better or worse, jump on this idea of building an endowment. And that involves trying to encourage large-scale donations from corporations as well as alumni. So I've been involved in that process, and I have to say I don't really like it because <coughs> the tuition keeps going up even though the endowment keeps getting bigger. So I've been sort of pushing back on this and saying, you know, it's a state university. It used to be a lot of first generation. I wasn't one, but it used to be a lot of first generation college kids. And, uh, you know, I'd like to see schools put more money into tuition and financial aid than into building multi-million dollar endowments. We're trying to build a $13 million endowment. I think we're at nine or 10. And yet, last year, tuition went up by like so um, I'm involved with that. And so my leadership on there is sort of counter leadership because I'm the one that kind of stands up at the meeting and says, okay, can we lower tuition this year and not, you know, take a million dollars out of the endowment would really kill us, you know? Um, do we need another building? So uh, I've taken a leadership role on that and um, it, they've been very receptive. Well, at least they let me give my views and, you know, say what they think. But I think when it comes to finances, that's sort of an area of expertise of mine. I've started and sold two businesses. And I kind of know the financial budgeting process pretty well in terms of how to be successful, how to be profitable. I think it would extend to a school board where you're trying to determine where best to put the money. Okay. And our final question, oh, I shouldn't say that, we're gonna have two more after, but uh, what is something about Triton that has made you proud and something that has made you critical? Well, let's start with critical, okay. So I was just having this conversation outside, and I don't really understand this, but it bugs me. So maybe I'm bugged for the wrong reason, so you can correct me if I'm wrong. So when there's school choice, okay, when, like, say, Newbury says, we, Newbury Court says, we don't have enough kids, we're going to open it up to Amesbury, Newbury, Salisbury, doesn't it hurt those towns to lose those students? It does, right? Like, doesn't the state give you funds based on how many students you have in your district? Okay, so I'm not sure I understand why that's allowed to happen. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's the state. <laughs> yeah, but it makes Welcome me wonder, like, why? Mm -hmm. So is Triton ever open up to, like? Yes, and in fact, if I can just respond yeah. to that question. Um, Triton, we actually have a positive cash flow due to our, our choice in students. We have more students choicing in from area districts than we have going out. Oh, okay, that's Now, good. granted, okay. seven, eight years ago, that was not the case. Uh, so we have changed programming and made changes that have made the district more more appealing to parents even outside our district. Okay, that's interesting. Because I had, so my daughter went all the way through Newburyport High School, even though she started as a sophomore. And um, she'd say, I have a friend named Barry, or I have a friend in Raleigh, so I didn't really understand how that was, but it made me wonder if one school district opens it up, if it has any effect on the other ones. So <coughs> most, I won't say all, but it is, to my understanding, most districts in the Commonwealth offer school choice because if you don't, you're almost at a disadvantage. Parents will look at that as, I don't want to say as an, uh, an alternative to, to uh, private school, and but it kind of is. It's kind of a step in between because our tax dollars follow that student to whatever school they choice out to. Uh, okay, so, I mean, I guess it's not critical, but it's just something that I wondered, you know, about that. Okay, so as far as critical, I would just say that I think Trayton could use a rebuild of high school. <laughs> I just think it, uh, it looks a little dated. You know, and I do think you're kind of competing. So I mean, that's tax money, I know. But I, um, 
I sort of feel like you have governors right down the road, you have Newburyport, which is what, like a mile or two away. And uh, it just seems to me like to remain sort of an attractive school for kids that have choice, okay? Um, and also, I think, <coughs> that, uh, you know, my impression, honestly, is that Triton kind of gets a bad rap sometimes. Like, um, I watch, I kind of, we, my wife and I like to check and see where students go when they leave high school. And I think it looks to me like Triton is as impressive as Amesbury. And, you know, if, if Newburyport has one good year because the kid goes to Harvard, well, I'm sure Triton's had Ivy League kids as well. So I look at that and I think, you know, then, um, the only other thing I'd say about it is, so another one of my big pet projects is jeweling. So I really am strongly against this. So I'll tell you what I did and you can hold me accountable. So I figured, I went online and I discovered that there was this um, smoke shop in Salisbury that had all these reviews on Yelp posted by high school kids from Newberry, Amesbury, and all these other places. So I went over and I confronted them and you know, they said, oh, you know, your kids could have got it from anywhere. And I said, well, here's my son's credit card statement. And it has your name on it. And I said, so what's he buy a year? Yeah. So they gave me a hard time. I gave him a hard time back. I went down to the police station in Salisbury, and I told them what had happened. And they said, well, we'll go look. Well, turns out they took it seriously, and they put a lot of pressure on this place, and they stopped selling to 18 and under kids and carding everybody that came in. And what my son told me, so my son didn't know that I did this, and I was talking the other day, and, he said, and I said, you know, I want you to tell me that you stopped this jeweling, because I don't know if you're familiar, but in each pod, there's a, as much nicotine as an entire pack of cigarettes. Okay, so kids who smoke those, they can smoke the whole pod in 10, 15 minutes easily, and sometimes they do it in the bathroom really quickly. And when their brains are developing from a scientific point of view, that nicotine becomes ingrained in your system and you're addicted for life. So um, it's a really insidious little device and all the kids do it. There's a big, it's really a scourge right now. Um, my son tells me that he thinks 80% of the kids he knows jewel. Okay. So I think more education on this, like I don't think they understand that this is like smoking a whole pack of cigarettes. I don't think they get that. I don't think they understand what it means. And I think there needs to be better awareness and better education around these vaping type devices that are mainly just designed to mainline the students. Christy, you have a comment on that, that shot. Yeah. Yeah, so my That's son said, I was kind of excited because he said, um, so I asked him, I said, so are your friends still doing it? He said, oh, they all had to quit. And I said, why? And he said, we can't buy it anymore. The guys say we're buying it from cut us off. And I was like, yeah, it's always just one spot that they can claim on to, you know, and it's like be a gas station or a convenience store. So I felt pretty good about that. Um, but uh, there has to be more awareness of that among kids. And I know, that, I know, you know, I'm not the principals, the teachers are trying really hard. And they're catching kids right and left tooling in the bathrooms and stuff. Yeah. Um, okay, we'll move on to, the, uh, we have two questions, Damon. Um, in what other capacities have you, have you served as a volunteer? So I was president of the PTO in Melrose for about a year and a half. And um, we had a really serious issue. So one of the elementary schools had a very dated air circulation slash heating system and it had failed six consecutive air quality tests by the state and we had one year um, over 150 kids that came down with asthma and so I wanted to get involved to help see if we could fix it and um, I'm going to say that I failed so what I got mainly from the PTO was well we went to school here and we're fine so it's not a big deal Okay. which kind of shocked me because I didn't grow up in Melrose, so I was sort of like, well, you know, okay. Anyway, so uh, then these kids all, they, they get better and they are um, found to not have it when they go on to middle school. And it's just this one elementary school. And so what we decided to do instead was do a fundraiser because the high school needed a new roof, which was perfectly valid because it was leaking. Okay. Um, but then we put in a turf field 
in the high school, which kind of bugged me because I really wanted them to do something about the air circulation in the school. Uh, so, um, you know, I learned a lot about priorities, I guess. And, uh, uh, but it was interesting. We, we did manage to do some things with curriculum and try to get some coding classes started. It was done on a, um, so it wasn't like an official class you could sign up for it and it was like a half hour, 45 minutes after school. And we also succeeded in getting Italian taught as a language on the same basis. Um, so we had some successes there and I think it was fun to be involved. I just wish we could have fixed that here problem. <laughs> Alicia? Um, what, what, do you, what do you see as Triton's greatest challenge? I apologize. Well, okay, so um, my impressions, and I would assume that they're accurate, is that this is a small town. And so even with the other school, the other towns involved, um, the tax base is not huge, all right? So I think, you know, to maintain a quality school system with the tax base that we have is the challenge for every town. And here it would seem to me like it's pretty good about so I did read a little bit about all the projects that have gone on in town and how some of the tax money is being spent. I don't know that much about them. But I know that, um, you know, it's, it quality education costs money. And I believe that that's true. And so um, towns have to make it a priority. And, uh, you know, like I remember talking to someone and they said, well, you know, it's true that, you know, this air quality is bad, but when it gets fixed, you know, those kids will not have to face it. And I said, right, but you only get one shot at these kids. So the kids that are going through here, they're getting asthma. What about them? You know, so, you know, I think there's an urgency. There's one shot. Each kid has one shot, 12 years, basically, right? And then they move on. So um, to try to maximize that experience for them with the budget that you have is the key. What is your understanding about the relationship between a regional school district and the board selected? Yeah, I have not to tell you the truth. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I don't know, okay? Um, I was not even sure whether this was like one school committee or there was a different committee for the high school or how it was set up. So, uh, yeah, much to learn, I have to be honest. That's fair. Um, uh, can you talk a little bit about what you know of the time commitment that's expected of the school committee member? Well, I don't know. I just found out today that this is, I think, till 2021. Is that correct? No. No. Oh. Okay. That was a misprint. You would oh. just be filling out this year's term till May of this year. Oh. And then okay. you would have to run to complete the, the term. Yeah. All right, so I would assume, not knowing for sure, but that there are regular meetings to be attended. And I think you also have to be available to take um, calls or emails from people who want to reach out to the school board and ask you questions. And I think that's all perfectly fine. Uh, I think that making yourself available in such a position is key so that people feel like they have someone they can reach out to. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you very much for even offering your time. Well, thanks a lot for having me. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you can join the audience. Good luck with everything. Yeah, you want to sit with the audience. Yep. Okay, could we have Roy Hammond? tell you a little bit about yourself. Um, we have some prepared questions of the same for all the candidates to ensure Okay. And uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself. All right. I also have a one-page resume if you okay. want copies of those. background? Um, 
basically educational, a little bit of everything else. Um, I, I'm a retired principal from Main Street High School. Uh, I, have, I was in education for 32 years. <coughs> Excuse me, plus all the odds and ends of various part-time jobs and business and everything else over the years. Uh, been in, in Newbury for 40 years. Moved in three weeks before the blizzard of 78. Oh, Great time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, my aunt and I have got four children that went through the Newbury system and Triton system. Uh, my wife taught in, in, in Triton uh, for 21 years. Uh, and for full, full disclosure, uh, my son was also, is not now, but was also director of technology uh, for it, at Triton for a number of years. I don't know the dates. But my son-in-law is also in technology right now at Triton, Brett Butkus. Uh, my son was John Hammond, my wife Karen Hammond. <laughs> um, and I just... I've always wanted to be able to get back to the town of Newbury, but being in education, never really had the time. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, it, this seemed like a good opportunity now that I'm retired, semi-retired. I'm also cooking breakfast uh, three days a week. At, 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 so I, I'm, I'm energetic, uh, I'm organized, I, I want to be able to get back to the town. Uh, you can see by my resume. Uh, certainly the number of degrees going through uh, administration. Like I said, I was retired as a principal of Amesbury High School, but I worked, up, worked all the way through teaching and, and everything that I could do. I uh, feel like I have a pretty good background in education and a good knowledge of especially being in it being involved in administration for 15 years, well, well, 17 years, but 15 years in Massachusetts, I get a good background with uh, MCAS and all the testing and every, all the regulations and so forth. Uh, so that there's a lot of things that I think I could bring into the bring into the committee. Okay. Um, all right, I'm going to kick it off. There'll be a few questions from us and a few questions from school committee. Okay. So, uh, our first question: What roles, if any, have you had in the Triton District? Say that again. What roles, if any, have you had in the Triton District? In the Triton District, I haven't. Okay. Uh, well, did you? Were you a teacher? I was a teacher. Yes. Yeah, you were. I did. I taught for a year, and was a permanent sub for, uh, for a year after that. Okay. So yeah, I did have that. How would you integrate leadership roles you may have had in the role of a school committee member? Uh, certainly, like I said, in terms of the uh, state regulations, and uh, I mean, I was always the one uh, looking at the statistics and so forth and looking over everything that was going on with testing and all of that. Um, and part of my role as an administrator was to report on all of that and work with that and, and make determinations and analyze. Uh, as a mathematician, that's probably my strength is analyzing statistics and so forth. Okay. What is something about Triton that has made you proud and something that has made you critical? Triton, I've always felt, is is a proud, re, a proud school district. Um, there's been struggles, budgetary, but that's struggle, struggles for everybody. Um, and uh, in terms of pride with Triton, I think the regionalization and working together with other communities is a critical piece. Uh, I feel that we need to be able to work with, our, with other, the other districts, the other communities. Um, honestly, uh, just because this is a small community, so to speak, um, one of the Raleigh members is a former student of mine from Ipswich, 
and I also am familiar with uh, Superintendent Scully, who's been appointed to the Salisbury School Committee. So I, I think I could work very well with the, the various, communi various communities and be able to work things out. And that's, I think that's my strength, is be able to you know, cooperate and work with, with other members and try to work things out, work th through things. It's a difficult situation with a regional school committee, no question. Uh, but that's something I would want to be able to do. Uh, difficulties for Triton? It's tough to put a, put a handle on, uh, I, other than the budget. I mean, as, a, as an Uber resident, the budget is a difficult issue for all Newbury residents because um, being, I hate to say it, but being kind of one of the elderly at this point, um, it is difficult to, to say on a fixed in income, you're going to push the in, you're going to push the tax rate, but at the same time we're going to support the schools. So there's a give and take, and that's probably one of the most difficult things to deal with. David, um, in what other capacities have you served as a volunteer? Honestly, I'd have to say probably help. Okay. Alicia? Um, currently, what do you see as the number one challenge facing the Triton Regional School District? Budget. Anything you want to elaborate on about the budget? Um, I don't know the details because I haven't been involved in it that deeply. Okay. But I think the budget is certainly, because for all the school districts, the budget is a tough part. I mean, in terms of dealing with how do we balance it to take care of tax rates, but also how we're going to um, take care of the students. And that's, I mean, my bottom line is take care of what, what we need to do for the schools. Thank you. Thank you for offering that. Dana? I guess not. No. Okay. <laughs> Dean, this is Dana Sullivan and Lori Heffernan. They were in our school. Our school yep. uh, what is your understanding about the relationship between a regional school district and the board select? Um. I don't be honest, like, I'm not sure. <laughs> I, you know, uh, other than budgetary and working that all out. I mean, I, in A3, I sat on many budgetary committees, but it was always with the school committee. We do the same thing. We would meet with the board of select. And then, and then we, we would meet, as administrators, we'd meet with the, the city council. And make our presentations, but that was that was our responsibility. Thank you, uh, Roy. Can you talk about what you know um, is involved for time commitment that's expected of a school committee member? I don't know for sure, um, but that's why I've kind of waited until I was retired or somebody retired because I'm willing to put in whatever time I need. Thank you. Thank you. If you want to have a seat in the audience. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Time. Thank you. Okay. Here we have Paul Goldner. I, I switched to a rubble. That's right. Maybe that's the thing. That's some fire, I think. Yeah. Impressive, right? Sorry, four. It's four. Hi, Paul. Yep. Paul. Come on, have a seat with us. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Okay. Um, we have some pre-prepared questions for asking okay. of all the candidates. Yep. To ensure fair process. Sure. So, would you like to tell us about yourself a little bit before we start? Um, sure. I'm um, 39 years old. Uh, I've lived in Newbury six years. Um, I have two kids, three and a half and one and a half years old. Um, so, here in part because they're can be entering Triton school system, and I'd like to try to help do what I can to make it a good school system for them or a better school system for them. 
Um, I teach physics. I've taught in Hamilton Lenham, Marblehead, and now in that new report. This is my sixth year up there. Um, I love teaching at the high school level, and I love teaching physics because it's all about uh, understanding how the world works. And uh, if you know how something works, you're better able to explain it, predict, control. Um, so that's a way of controlling the world around us and what through understanding. Okay. What roles, if any, have you had in the training district? Uh, I haven't here. Um, I, like I said, I've been a teacher um, throughout the North Shore, um, but I haven't taken on any roles in this district. Okay. How would you integrate leadership roles you may have had in the role of a school committee member? So I think that um, a school committee works best <coughs> So it's a committee. It works best when every person in the committee has their own areas of expertise and their own areas of leadership. Um, I am very good with data and numbers, and um, I feel like that's an area where I can provide leadership and provide as needed um, and provide insight into the um, functioning of the school committee. And I think, though, there's nine members, so every time you have a question, you have to it's in a different area, there may be different people who step forward. And as part of that committee, it's your job to understand where are your areas of expertise to step forward and where are the areas of expertise of other people that they should be stepping forward and taking a little bit of a leadership role. Um, I think that being an active teacher right now um, gives me also some expertise into the functioning of the school and what it looks like from the inside at that secondary level. Um, and that would be a place where I would take some leadership, uh, how, what do the policies look like that affect the day-to-day -day functioning of a high school, day-to-day um, -day functioning of the school, and the way that's positive for the students that promote the learning outcomes we're looking for, uh, and what are policies that don't do that, why, why and why. Um, being in it now, I have that little area of expertise. So I think those are two different areas where I can lead a little bit. What is something about Triton that has made you proud and something that has made you critical? Um, I actually really loved the We Are Triton movement last spring um, to try and get people organized to understand that we have a critical problem. Um, and that was a community trying to step up and help with the school system. So it's this ownership of the whole community, of the school system, that we're proud of it and we want it to be the best that we can be. <clears throat> Um, I think that was a really powerful parent and community engagement. Uh, and when you see that, you know that the community is looking for the school to be better than it is now. And it doesn't matter how good a school is, it can always be better than it is now. And when you see that coming from the outside, uh, from the community, from the parents, that makes it easier to lead the school in a, in a positive direction. Um, so that's something that I really thought was helpful. It was at the same time unfortunate that um, the overriders ultimately defeated there because I think that you do need the funds to make a school operate. Um, and sometimes that's on the community and sometimes on that's on the state and the interaction between the two gets really complicated. But when the state's not doing its share, you have to find ways to do a little bit more counterbalance while at the same time dealing with state agents and saying we need help, which happened. And also all of that interaction was both the positives and the negatives of the school district, I think, uh, and the community interaction with the school district. Okay. David? Um, in what other capacities have you served as a volunteer? Interesting. Um, I'm not sure what counts as a volunteer and what doesn't. Um, I'm active uh, in my schools that I've taught in, in a variety of ways, uh, working with the students. Um, I, I'm part of the Union in Greyport High School. Um, I think that's an important role inside the building. Um, it's not truly volunteer, but if you work out the pay, it almost pays for the time also. Um, you know, I, I do a lot of sort of the, the small things with my students and with the students in the school, um, whether it's chaperoning dances or helping them uh, with projects that have nothing to do with physics at all. Um, 
and right now my volunteer time is kind of low because um, of my children, but uh, I try to be involved uh, politically where I can because I think this local politics are important. I'm not always out knocking on doors. I don't, it's not who I am as a leadership person, but I'd like to with people who do do those things, this is a way that we maybe we can be a little bit better um, as a community. So I spend time in that way. Mm -hmm. This is my answer. Okay. Okay. Alicia? Um, in your opinion, yep. what do you think um, currently is the number one challenge facing the Triton Regional School District? Health insurance. Health. Um, health insurance. I think that's the number one challenge. It, it, it's the, Health insurance costs are crushing school districts, and there's not really anything school districts can do about it to manage it. Um, I, what did I see? It's about 16% of the school budget currently, something like that. And that, you think about the millions of dollars that that spending on health insurance, and you can't do anything really to keep that cost under control while keeping your employees happy. Um, and so you've got this constant balancing act going on there that I think is emblematic of school as a whole. It's, we can't do anything about this outside force, but we need to in order to do the things we want to do that work for our community. Um, so I, until, until that problem is solved, I think schools at the state, throughout the state, are gonna continue to face the types of budget challenges we faced here in the last year. Thank you. And I'll turn you over to Dina Sullivan. What is your understanding about the relationship between the regional school district and the Board of Select? That's an interesting question. Uh, I don't know that one specifically, so I'm going to say it in this way. Um, the school committee is in charge of making the policy decisions for the district and hiring the superintendent who carries out those policies through hiring actions. and. Uh, the Board of Selectmen makes the town policy, um, and the school should always be working jointly with the town. Um, in a regional district, you have the problem that you have here three competing uh, boards of selectmen who don't always have the same interests that they're pushing them towards the schools and the same uh, interests that they're promoting within the town. And so we end up with sort of a split between what the that should influence the school committee members uh, in dealing with each other because any outside differences of opinion on those board of selectmen are going to influence what the school committee can do, the school committee members can do. Mm -hmm. yeah, thanks, Paul. I was wondering if you could um, talk a little bit about what you know of the time commitment that is expected of the school committee member. No, it's a lot. Um, <laughs> uh, I spoke to Dan a little bit about it. Um, I'm familiar with it a little bit from seeing from the upside. Um, and I've had other friends who've been on school committees in various places. And I know that, like many things, the more you care about it, and the more that you want to do a good job, the more time it's going to take. And I know that budget season in the winter is always your heaviest time commitment. Um, I know you know, got a couple meetings a month and maybe one definite one maybe and maybe a subcommittee meeting um, and I know that I know that though at night when I'm at home um, and I have downtime I like being involved with the types of questions that a school committee is involved with I always am thinking about how to make the school function better how can I do my job better as a teacher what should I be doing in this circumstance over here to improve the school or to improve my role within the school um, or numbers. What's the puzzle and how can I fit this puzzle together? Now, mm -hmm. Either I don't have enough, so what can I do with it? What do I take away? Or, okay, how do I spread these resources to make some improvement in an area of importance? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. right. Thank you very much for your willingness to step up to Thank you for your Thank time. You. you can take a seat in the audience if you'd like. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. I would like to say that I was quiet because some of the questions were a little bit prescribed, but 
I think most of the folks on our board, I was a teacher, I have a master's in education, and I want to say to you folks, I'm thoroughly impressed. And it's really nice to see the intricacies of how you are thinking about the perspective of maybe stepping up to be a, a member of the school committee after being so deeply involved in the education <coughs> process. I'm, I'm, I'm touched. I want to thank every one of you. I think it's phenomenal. Thank you. I think we're lucky as a town to have it's just, these it's, four people to step it's, up. It's, it's awesome. I wish we could put each one of you on for a month. <laughs> <laughs> So you can bring your talents forward. Actually, I hope they don't disappear. I want to tap into some of this talent. <laughs> don't end up serving on school committee. We can certainly use you. Okay. Any other comments? Just to sum up what Jeff said, it's going to make the tough the choice tough. Yeah. Agreed. Um, so everybody feel ready to make a decision? No. We'll take it under advisement. <laughs> I mean, we could also take it under advisement. Oh, gosh. As a school committee, we hope that you don't because we have a meeting tomorrow yeah. and we'd like to have the <laughs> next person <laughs> seated. Throw someone right in the fire. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Just to clarify, how long this person is going to be appointed for? Until May. Until May. Yeah. So this, this so seat's only... So it isn't for the rest of the year, it's till the end of... Until the, the next election. election. Yeah, yeah right. so it, election. you'll have to run for the seat in the spring. So there'll be two seats. There'll be two candidates open in, the, in May. There'll be two seats open in the seat. Yeah, my seat. Oh. Yeah, her seat might be open. But I'll, she might be my friend. Right. But. <laughs> so but the way the the way it works is each year we have one person, one seat come up. Okay. It's, it's it's going to be really hard to take and distill the higher qualities of. One person over the other, there's a, high code, there's, there's a lot of experience. This is not going to be easy, guys. You know, it's, it's just, you know, no, I mean, we had four great candidates go forward. It it's, uh, it's rare. Usually we're trying to. Yeah. And guys, guys from, from the inside, you know, you guys are all from basically maybe a little broader perspectives with the publishing, but all from the inside. So. Hmm. I'm ready to hear someone talk. All right. Well, <laughs> good to go. <laughs> uh, I move that we nominate Paul Goldner just to move things forward. We can discuss it. And then... Is there a second? Second. Just a discussion. Um, so the reason I, I chose Paul over some of the other people's because he's uh, a different, he's a lot younger than some of the other school committee members. He brings a different perspective as a current teacher as opposed to someone who's moved through the system and is now outside of the system and so I think that adds some valuable things and he has kids who are coming into the system which I think also gives him another perspective that is uh, is very valuable. I think they're all great candidates. Like I said I would have I would love to have hired them all but I can only choose one and, and that's the one that I I feel strongest about. And just to open up another thought, um, all great, all great candidates. You know, I, I kind of gravitate a little bit towards Mr. Hammond because of the long list of things he's done, and also the fact that that Ainsbury High School was only last June, so you're not that stale. <laughs> So, I mean, that, that's pretty phenomenal to have these kind of folks. So that's just a thought to it, if we go forward. I agree with Jeff. Alicia, here. Um, I appreciate the, the fact that Mr. Hammond has run his own business, for sure. That will also give him a different perspective on things. obligation to public education. Um, I believe the fight that Triton has the most is at the state level. Um, 
I think that's very, uh, that's the most critical piece right now, I feel, of the challenges facing Triton is that, yes, it's budgetary, but if the three towns had to pay for Triton through overrides, we wouldn't have a school. So, um, I, I tend to gravitate to someone who, who understands that, that fight. <laughs> it's a tough choice. Yeah. It's a really tough choice. I mean, we have, we have. I mean, I don't know. I, I. Well, you have a movement on the table. Do we have a second for that? Or? Yes, yeah, second. Sure. We're in a discussion of that because we have to start somewhere. Yeah. Um, well, from, from what, who stuck out to me was, uh, honestly, was the first and the, and the third candidate, because they understand the budget piece and the money piece. And, um, I wouldn't, I don't want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, we, we really have to, we have to make everyone understand that there are no losers if we choose someone tonight because this is this is going to be till next May. That person that we choose is going to bring thoughts and new ideas, and might hate it. So you know, <laughs> this is just someone. That, this is just someone that is going to be in that position, and hopefully bring something good to that position. And then they have that idea of whether they want to stay in that position and really run for it, or someone else might want to run too. So. And then we also have a couple of other boards and committees that might. Yeah, it's a great help talent. too as well <laughs> that we could use help at. Okay, so um, we have a motion on the table. Can we offer our input. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. More, yes. than, more than you know. <laughs> um, I, like all of you, am very impressed with the four candidates that we had come forward. They all had strengths in different areas. Um, however, the one that stood out to me was Paul Goldner because the three primary, the three responsibilities of a school committee is the budget, hiring and firing the superintendent, and policy. And he was able to touch on all of those. I like the fact that he referenced that since he is a teacher, he can give us insight into how policies actually work within a school. Um, even though he's in another district, we are in the process of reviewing our policies and input like that I think is valuable. Um, he touched on the health care costs, so he certainly is, is following and probably is well aware of how that affects um, his own personal finances as well as as a, as a district, um, he touched upon the, the time commitment. I think he has an understanding that it's not just monthly meetings, but that there are subcommittee meetings too. And I think again that being in a in a school right now gives him that advantage of, of knowing that. And also, I think um, although he did maybe wasn't aware, but I think he has a good understanding of the role between the school committee and the board of selectmen and how the budget process will ultimately pan out and that and not that the other candidates did not have that understanding. I think everybody had at least a basic understanding of, of you know how this process works. Um, it is a tough decision but that would be my choice. I could see a good fit for our committee right now. I agree with Dina. Um, I would also support Paul. Um, I think one thing I would add to everything that Dina just said is I, I was struck when he talked about being proud of something for Triton. He talked about the We Are Triton group last year, the movement that formed last year. Um, you know, I've been part of this community since 2007, and there's always been a discussion about how do you get the three school communities to work together, and I've never seen it happen until last year. And it was, it was a wonderful uh, group, and um, just that he was aware of that and spoke about that. I thought that was Any other discussion? 
All right, we have a motion on the table uh, to appoint Paul Gold. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulations. So, could you just, is that unanimous? I just didn't vote. What did you say? I didn't vote. So, you're going to vote no or are you abstaining? I, I abstain. Nice. But everybody else will get it. Yes. Yes. And um, to our other candidates, so impressed. Um, rarely do we have a, a showing of qualified and intelligent people. And there are other needs in town, and also there will be other positions on the school committee, you know, elections coming up. We don't want to lose you. Thank you for coming. And, uh, you know, yes. your brain power is very much appreciated and needed. So. And, JR, can I seriously add to that? If you are still interested in, in helping, I mean, with STEM and with your, your background, both of yours, um, I am sure we have opportunities that we can can use you in. And, and please, don't don't lose sight of that and don't lose sight of the election in May as well. Mm -hmm. right. Thank you all. Thank you, everyone. Thank you guys. Congratulations, Paul. I know what you'll be doing with all your spare time. <laughs> Location Manager, Patch Bay Productions, LLC, filming of Showtime Production on Newman Road and Hay Street on Tuesday, October 16th. Time to be determined. Hi. Come on up. Come on up. Tell Thanks. us a little bit about what you're doing. Um, this is my colleague, Jared Eckelbeam. We're spending a lot of light work out here. And um, this is actually my, my second time coming to filming in Newtown. The last time was with Fair History, where we especially these lonely roads which are so often scripted in our stories this one is a comedy that's um james Corden and matthew Bainton created this comedy series in the uk and we're making the american version uh you know recast one of the characters is now female and uh there's it's essentially a mashup of Took the office and parks rec and CSI and some New England town. <laughs> and uh, the opening sequence in our story, one of our main characters is walking to work on a lonely road and has a long way to go, which is why he's a pick Newman, because it really gives that impression. And uh, he, one lone car goes by and uh, there's a little bit of uh, roadkill, fake roadkill, and it swerves to avoid him and it rolls. And that's the whole scene. And he's stunned and uh, finds a phone that later gets him unwillingly involved in all sorts of international crime papers he wants to be part of. He just wants to get to work. So that's the story. Um, and Jared's been out here uh, looking at the road and how to achieve this with um, the chief of police, and Chief Riley, also the chief janitor of fire, and deputy chief Lucy. Do I have that right? Uh, who we met with and went over a plan for, uh, for doing this, and I'll let Jared uh, take it away. Thank you. A uh, little site plan that's kind of been built between me and both the chiefs and the deputy chief um, in terms of uh, ensuring that, you know, everything's under control, you're doing everything safely, and you know, that things go smoothly, in a, in a sense. Um, the proposed plan that we kind of have right now that I've been talking about is um, the, uh, the chief and the deputy chief think it's best that we shut down, um, do a closure on Newman, as well as um, a partial closure on A Street. Um, residents will also have access to their homes um, with maybe a, you know, a slight delay of a couple of minutes. Um, but you know, we'll be reaching, reaching out to all the, the community there to make sure that if they have any questions, comments, concerns, they can reach out to us. We're here for them because they're letting us into the community, and you know, we want to you know, make it a, a good experience for them so that just not you guys, but you know, the community wants us back in their right. neighborhoods. And we invite people from a safe distance yeah. <laughs> yeah. for neighbors, um, you know, to have sort of front row seats from their porches with cooperation with the 
police so that no one is actually coming down the road. And we do have uh, our own security as well and police uh, to do that entire lockup. How many days do you anticipate it taking? It's one day, and it's just proposed for um, uh, Tuesday, and uh, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. is the approximate timing. We have a little bit of prep just to make the greenery at the edge of the road look right, and we've been working with the trustees to make sure that we're doing that in the correct place and in the correct way. There's nothing going into the ground there, just sort of like a Christmas tree on the sand sort of thing. Um, we also met with uh, Mr. Bob Colby, who was very helpful and gave us kind of a lay of the land uh, up here. Um, so uh, we have all of our footprint units. We do travel with a footprint uh, tucked inside our closure for safety um, and also for efficiency so that we're in and out on time so that all of our work takes place as planned and we don't have a long commute and we're not causing other traffic. Um, the Intermittent traffic control on hay would allow people to, to pass through when we're not doing a take. Uh, you know, when we cut, that would be determined with police and our directorial department, which is in charge of safety on the set, uh, in coordination with police. Uh, new one would be closed for the duration. We would occupy a field that's being um, provided by trustees to be our catering tent. Um, we would have our small footprint of support vehicles, uh, including our medic, tucked in the um, gravel lot, uh, which is all the trustees. Mm. Uh, we work with trustees a lot. We filmed at Crane. Uh, this is my fifth film that I've brought to the North Shore, including Manchester by the Sea, Channel Quiddick, uh, all of Portridge, and Berry Street. Mm. Now, would you? Oh, sorry. Well, that's okay. So, can, can you, and I'm sorry if I went over my head, but how was this 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, filming, how is it going to affect the residents on the street? It shouldn't affect them at all, except for there being a reroute around Newman. Okay. Uh, people can still travel through Hay at the discretion of police when it's safe to do so. So they'll lock it up. Takes usually take a few minutes, except when you're doing a stunt, they can take a little bit longer. So, um, <clears throat> so essentially, we would reach out to everyone. We would have a flyer with uh, Jared's name and number on it uh, in Not advance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that everyone knows what to expect. They have a face, they have a name, we'll go to their house, we'll accommodate any special needs that the flyer describes. If you have oxygen deliveries, if you have moving or construction plan, you have contractors coming, contact us. We want to work with you to make sure that we're getting them through efficiently and that you have access to your homes at all time, and we apologize for whatever short delay there might be, and yes, we're working with local authorities to make sure that it's brief, but also that it's safe. You reached out to the greatest guy, Bob Colby. Yes. I grew we, up with him, I've known him quite well, and he knows the he's area, but he's also a uh, Raleigh police officer. So oh, no kidding. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, we thought so too. Yep. He was he also does a lot of mash hanging, so he knows anything to do with the mash. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A lot of construction up the street, as you know, um, up on the hill with all the machinery and everything else. So I don't know how much conflict that will be getting those guys through. They probably come in from the other way. I think that the police have a plan for how to reroute stuff, and they okay. would have, you know, they've talked about what complement of detail officers they would need on in order to. And the detail that. officers, if they're expenses involved, you worked it out with them? That would be invoiced directly to the production company. Okay. Yeah, and this is something that I've discussed with the town administrator uh, we met briefly last week. Um, so and it's not greenhead season. Yes. Thank goodness. <laughs> 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 um, I've been hearing that. Where would you be closing Newman Road? From down by the, the lower green or just, just near your crew and catering tent? Um, uh, above, I'll let you take that. Uh, uh, what was proposed to me from uh, the deputy chief was that Newman Road, as a as a cut through, would be cut off essentially down by the lower green. Yep. Except for residents. Okay. So residents would be able to get in, but he stated that it's major uh, majority a cut through way for anybody that doesn't live there. Mm -hmm. So if you not live through there, we'll absolutely be able to get through. But I think he wants to contain it all the way down. It's a tight road to people get in there to turn them back around and cause more of a, a delay and a jam that stopping them at the source. And would you be 
uh, stopping joggers and bikers, or would you let them go through if they're not coming during that time when you're doing the shoot? We, we, would, we would definitely try to keep the lockup a full lockup okay. during, yeah, because it's, because it's a stunt. And it's, it's what we do every day, and it can be done very safely, but I think having a jogger come through would probably take longer than <laughs> our setup. Do you want me to add anything, any kind of a, um, Yeah, or something that's not, it doesn't, you need anything unique to this. You want to keep the stunt the way it's supposed to be, and you don't want to add anything extra in there. Well, yeah, and we want to eliminate any, any possibilities Chance, right. for, yeah, for delays, because we're daylight dependent, but most of all, for safety. Safety, right. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Motion to approve the special permit. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I love Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, if you guys are um, <laughs> 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 we want to slow you down. <laughs> 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 Have a good night. Uh, you too. We have a request for public property use. Newburyport Coral Society banner on the backstop at Newbury Upper Green. Friday, November 23rd, 2018, through Monday, December 10th, 2018, to advise, to advertise concert at the Belleville Church on Saturday, December 12th, and Sunday. Oh, sorry. I corrected it. It was the wrong dates. December 8th through the 12th. Eight for the twelve. Eight notes. <laughs> 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 yeah, you're involved. <laughs> 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 it's actually it's Saturday, December eighth at eight o'clock, and Sunday, uh, December ninth at two thirty. I got my packet early. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I talked to Ellen about it. So the uh, the theme of the winter concert is peace and remembrance. Um, we're doing a piece by um, the French Baroque um, composer Michel Pontier, but we're also previewing or premiering a, we're going to be the only Massachusetts Choral Society to premiere a piece by a Utah composer um, on the Armistice mm -hmm. in 2018. So that will be the concert. Have you, so, you, have you guys been working on it? Well, I'm actually going to leave right now because I'm missing rehearsal. <laughs> <laughs> so um, they started right after Labor Day. Yeah, nice. Mm -hmm. um, do we have a motion? Motion to motion. Second. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Uh, I I'm going to excuse myself from the next, would you? Uh, one day liquor license, greater new report, mothers and families, Halloween party at Spencer Pierce Little Farm, oh, to the Flames, Sunday, October 21st, 2018, from 1 to 4 p.m. Number of venues downtown. Oh, do you want me to say? I would love to talk about what's going on. Yeah. Um, my name is Jennifer Reardon, and I am on the board of directors of the Greater Newburyport Mothers Club. We're a 100% volunteer board, and we serve the Greater Newburyport areas with um, families. And this is one of our big events that we do every single year. So this is our Halloween party. Um, we did the same last year. This is an entirely new committee this year, so we're ironing out the details as we go along. So we're a little behind on getting the paperwork, but um, we were able to get that done within the allowed time by the minute. And um, so we have our party coming. We have Metsy's. Newburyport Brewing Company and Ipswich. Um, Ipswich has the first right of refusal for all of Spencer Little's events, as I'm sure you know. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, it's just going to be such a great time, and we have so many fun things planned for the kids. And um, any extra monies that we create goes to local charities within the Greater Newburyport area. So we do a lot with donating diapers, formula. Um, clothing for families that don't have, you know, as much as other families may have in this area. Believe it or not, there is a huge need to help families um, just kind of survive in this difficult economy. So we do really good for the community. This is one of our very big events, and we do like it to be a family event. Um, the purpose for the beer is really so we can keep the dads yeah. from leaving early, <laughs> to be quite honest. Um, but it's <laughs> um, 
And then we have pictures, we have um, a pumpkin patch hunt, we have a hayride, and then they can go inside and tour the farm. Um, it's just a lovely, it's a lovely event. This is just exclusive to our members, um, which we're anticipating 400. Half of them, of course, will be children, um, and then the other half is usually parents and grandparents. So we would love it if we could get approval for our event and um, promise to be extremely respectful. It is run by moms, and we run a pretty tight ship at our events. Um, so that's our request today. Well, thank you for telling everybody about it. Any discussion? Oh, motion. We have a motion. We, we, have a, we had a motion and a second. Right? A second. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. We have yeah, to get a vote oh, okay. <laughs> All those in favor? Right. Uh, good luck. Will thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you so much. Thanks. And thanks thank you, Alan. Thank you. Really appreciate it. You were the last one on the agenda. Thank you for being here. Yes. Oh, it was, oh, what an interesting. Oh, my goodness. I have four year old identical twin boys, and my eyes were opened <laughs> big time at the beginning of your meeting. So, bravo. They were all very strong candidates, and yeah. I learned a lot. Well, thank you so thank much. Thank you. Good luck. Thanks a bunch. We have a vote to accept the donation of rocks from TW Excavating for the construction of the retaining wall at the Central Street playing fields. Motion to accept. Second. Uh, any discussion? We want them, right? Don't yes. take them for granted. Okay. Yes. yes. Oh, very good. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Uh, <laughs> perhaps a good, a good idea to. Send a letter of thanks to TW Excavating for their generosity. Okay, any old business from the board? Seeing no uh, citizens. Oh, go ahead, John. Perhaps we should mention the monument is moved. That's yeah. old no. business. It got moved? It got moved. Thanks, yes. Um, and everything went well. The boys from the highway department did it. They did a great job. Uh, both. Uh, Bernie Field Senior, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there were a lot of volunteers there. Bernie was very instrumental and it didn't in break helping. It. Did not break, break it. it. Everything moved perfect. It was very heavy. Somewhere was around 12,000 pounds. Wow. Um, and it was awkward. It was the oddest shaped rock you've ever saw in your life. Uh, but ground. everything fell together. Um, even when we called the cement company, they went, okay, we'll be right there. That's it. Huh? What? <laughs> so, yeah, everything went perfect. It's lined up perfect. The right height. So, um, cool. all went so well. So, it's in the ground and, uh, now? Say it again? It's in, it's in the ground. Yes. It's in the ground. It's cemented in place. And it's so, I need to reach out to the four volunteer women that um, from the garden club that offered to... Well, yeah. the only thing, we do have to still go through site plan review. I yeah. jumped the gun a little bit when I gave permission to move the stone. Um, Without having them gone through, go through the full process. So, all right. Um, so once they have developed their plan, um, they do need to bring it before the plan. So I think they might plan being landscaping plan. Mm -hmm. I, so I think I think they need to. I need to still reach out to them and get yeah. them to help. Okay. Um, the reason for that was is the highway department had one day. One day only to do it because this week they got all busy doing preparing to put in the new not the docks the so ramp and they knew that and the weather was perfect I mean it, everything fell together yeah. and, and it just came out really well and kudos to the guys for a great job so. excellent any other old business from the board could I just ask a yeah. question could you just tell me the name of was it Bernie Bernie Field. Senior. Bernie Field Senior was a key volunteer, is that what you're yes. saying? And then there were other volunteers. Um, if I'm giving credit, I want to give credit to the highway department. He was the only Bernie. Uh, he was the only person I saw when I was on yeah, site. Fred, Fred was in and out, but he was okay. just horrible. Fred Davis. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Thanks, no, no administrators report tonight. Right? No. Okay. Uh, we lost our audience for no citizens' concerns. Uh, we have correspondence from MassDOT uh, regarding bridge inspection on the Middle Road Parker River Bridge and Hanover Street Little River Bridge. Now I try to read that. Can you, can you explain that? What that says to me? I mean, Basically, it's just little small stuff that's got in the snow plows and nailed a couple of the 
button and things on the side. Those need to be fixed. Um, the hot top is cracking, but it, you, you got to remember those, um, the frost, the tides, yeah. all move, all that stuff. So we just stay on top of the seal cracker and we're going to be fine on that. Um, the underneath one, James is going to take a look at it next week. And then Commodity just didn't have time this week to get in time for this uh, tonight's report. But he promised me he'd get at it this week. Same mostly superficial, not, not, yep. not no news yeah, that's too If it was major, they'd have shut it down. Yeah. So. Okay, and we also received a letter uh, from the Massachusetts office on disability regarding the possibility of, uh, uh, regarding a commission on disability initiative. And uh, I'm going to turf that to Sam because he's really our... 88 coordinator. Correct. <laughs> Thank you, Tracy, <laughs> to put it in much shorter terms. All right. Uh, we have a review of meeting minutes. Do we have any minutes this time? Motion to approve October 2nd. Second. Second. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Do we have any warrants? Motion to sign warrants. Second. So. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any meeting updates? Um, I attended the DCC last Thursday. Um, they're looking to move the landlord lease agreement forward. Uh, Tracy sent that to town council for review. Mm -hmm. That will come back to us. And they are also moving forward with developing an alternative assessment, even though Newbury is not, we've said that we're not particularly interested in it. They want to at least go through the process of working out what that would look like and how it would work so that they can then possibly bring it back to us again. Um, they're also putting forward information about the October 23rd meeting, and they put out a, a notification to all Newbury residents about the Saturday meeting as well for us. So they're plugging for us with factual information, unbiased. <laughs> Thanks for taking that on, um, I am going to be attending the Rec Committee meeting tomorrow night. I'm hoping to get them to uh, vote and bring a policy for the, the field house to us. Two things they're working on that I want them to, to get it off their plates and onto ours. One is the field house policy, and the other is the fee fee schedule. So mm -hmm. I'm going to attend tomorrow night and hopefully get that process moving. Okay. Because we can't use that. Even though, the, even though it's the house is complete, the field house is complete, we really can't use it without policy. Yeah. So it's, I feel as if it's hold, holding us up now. So we've got to get crack a lack on that. OK, thanks for tackling that. All right, uh, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Could I? I'm yes. sorry. Could would, could any of the selectmen um, just comment briefly on the meeting that you had, the forum? I understand there's about 35 people. I see some posters up there. Um, does anybody have a comment about that? I have some pictures that Tracy sent me that I want to run, but I need to have something to write about it. Um, I think maybe about 35 people, but I think there was only 18 residents, only 18 people in the audience. I think everybody else was either on one of the two committees. So, but all, but you're all residents. We're all residents. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, positive. Yeah, I do. I think it was factual. I think, um, I think people got a better understanding of why we're moving in this direction. Um, I think it's the first of a big process. I think that the more we can, the more we can explain why we're doing what we're doing to the public, which is what you're going to do. So what do we want to tell, tell Jen? Are you? Is it? Was it taped? Yes. Yeah. So yes. people can watch it. Yeah. 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 I can send you the link. Yep, yeah, that'd be great. And yeah. you're, when no. you say first of pro a process, are you going to have more forums? I would like to, but I don't think we can have them before this. You time don't have a lot of time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. I think we have to wait and see how the vote what happens. Goes. Right. And then hope people understand that we do have a need. The need's not going away. It's just um, getting more expensive. It's yeah. just going to get more expensive the longer we, we wait. And, um, and I feel as if it's going to be the best interest, the best interest of taxpayer money to tackle two projects at once. 
Jen, I think it became pretty clear to us once the architect is really on board now what the program needs really are yeah. and how things really fit together. And, uh, you know, for myself, you know, the ability to get new, new on one location with water and sewer begins to make more sense than trying to chase for buildings that are wood and don't have that type of sewer. Right. So, you know. We feel as if this is the best solution for the program needs of the town with the least taxpayer impact. Thanks. It gets a lot done at once, too. It doesn't spread it out over the years. Thank you. Okay. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.